Hi, I'm Emma, and welcome to my presentation on algorithmic processing techniques for discrimination mitigation in clinical resource allocation decision support. There are many different ways of defining fairness, and this can change even according to context. From the data science perspective, these two criteria are widely adhered to in terms of algorithmic fairness. This concerns fairness according to some protected characteristic. Protected characteristics or sensitive attributes are any personal attributes which should be regarded with impartiality when it comes to decision making, such as ethnicity, gender, or socioeconomic status. The first point relates to direct discrimination and the second point to indirect discrimination. Machine learning models are said to be sufficiently fair when they satisfy both of these constraints. As today's healthcare services focus on providing individualized healthcare and maximizing patient autonomy, the optimal treatments are those which take individual patient needs into consideration. This necessitates dealing with sensitive attributes carefully. Algorithmic to clinical decision support is becoming ever more popular. However, certain real world clinical machine learning decision tools are known to demonstrate significant levels of discrimination. Discrimination on the basis of sensitive attributes is a violation of both legal and ethical regulations within healthcare, and such discrimination in healthcare could have severe consequences, such as limiting certain patients' access to vital resources and negatively impacting their quality of care. Electronic health records contain plenty of sensitive attributes, and therefore decisions on the basis of electronic health record data, which is often used in these tools, must be controlled in terms of discrimination. This is an issue which has gained attention in major global media as well as in the scientific research community. Simple solutions, such as just removing the sensitive attributes or creating separate models for segregated groups are naive approaches, and this calls for a more complex solution. As the black box nature of many machine learning models disguises the influence of sensitive attributes on final decision outcomes, further complications arise. In addition, trying to optimize both model performance and fairness often results in one being improved at the detriment of the other. So far, the research can generally be divided into two main categories, discrimination discovery and discrimination prevention. This research builds upon research and discovery to focus on prevention. Research focused on discovery has brought to light the discriminatory nature of machine learning healthcare tools already disseminated in public. It is now imperative to work on mitigating this discrimination. Two stages can be controlled for fairness, data collection and data processing. However, controlling the collection stage may be insufficient to ensure fairness. Therefore, altering the processing stage can be beneficial as this works to minimize the discrimination given the collected data and so can help combat pre-existing disparities in data sets. Regarding data processing then, there are three major stages at which adjustments may be made. Pre-processing, in-processing and post-processing. So the focus of this research was on comparing algorithmic techniques for each of the three processing stages and this is done by applying them to a known discriminatory clinical resource allocation algorithm. There is a growing body of research on discrimination mitigation for machine learning algorithms and plenty of evidence to suggest that discrimination may easily arise when these are applied to clinical decision support. Although limited and more often performed in other fields outside of healthcare, Research into methods to tackle discrimination in such algorithms does exist. However, many mitigation techniques haven't been tested in the clinical setting. Furthermore, it is not known which are optimal and what does not exist is both an assessment of different mitigation methods when applied to a clinical resource allocation setting and a direct comparison and appraisal of these methods corresponding to different stages within the machine learning process within the healthcare setting. To that aim, this was the major question that the research set out to investigate.
The chosen dataset then is a publicly accessible medical record based dataset. It originates from a previous study which set out to investigate the discrimination present in a particular healthcare risk production and resource allocation machine learning tool. This tool was used to help determine future clinical treatment plans for millions of patients in the United States. The researchers worked with a large academic hospital in the United States who had adopted the tool. The resulting data set is a combination of electronic health record data and medical claims data. The table here gives an overview of the data set, known as the dissecting bias data set. The sensitive attribute is race, with black being the protected attribute. The label is a risk score assigned on the basis of both medical expenditure forecast and estimated future resource use. This risk score determines whether or not a patient will be allocated enrollment in a specialised care treatment programme. The actual data set employed within the study is synthetic since the original data set was not made publicly available due to concerns over identity exposure. However, it does contain the same characteristics as the original data set and it was created with previous researchers intention to be used for further research in this field. It contains over 150 feature variables and nearly 50,000 observations. The algorithmic processing techniques and model fairness metrics are taken from IBM's comprehensive open source machine learning fairness toolkit, AIF 360 or Artificial Intelligence 360, which is publicly available on GitHub. This particular toolkit was chosen as it represents many of the current state-of-the-art techniques as it was developed to consolidate a vast array of the latest research findings in machine learning fairness. However, it should also be acknowledged that it is far from exhaustive. The chosen metrics then are the ones shown here. They reveal different insights when it comes to measuring distributive fairness. For example, by comparing the rates and ratios of favorable outcomes received by different categories of sensitive attribute. Group fairness was emphasized here, given the scenario of an algorithm which discriminates on the basis of race. The chosen mitigation techniques were reweighing, adversarial debiasing, and reject option based classification. These are chosen primarily for their generalizability, flexibility, and ease of use. Reweighing works by assigning weights to observations and then altering these weights to incline those from underprivileged groups towards a favorable outcome and vice versa for those from privileged groups. Adversarial debiasing learns a classifier to maximize model accuracy whilst introducing another network known as the adversary which works with biased behavior. The original learning algorithm is then adjusted to compensate the loss function of the adversary. Reject option based classification manipulates the outcome of the algorithm by establishing a critical region. Within this critical region, instances are assigned opposing labels to either improve or impair their designated outcome depending on the value of their sensitive attribute. This improves the outcome for underprivileged groups whilst making the for privileged groups slightly less favourable. The classification algorithms employed include logistic regression and random forest. And these are the ones prescribed by the examples in the toolkit for each mitigation method, and so they differ for each mitigation method accordingly. The data set was split into 50% train, 30% validation and 20% test. This table shows a summary of the results when applying the three techniques compared to their corresponding plane models. Each technique is represented by the version which outperformed all the others for the dissecting bias data set. So for example, reject option included three different versions. Each one was conditioned on a different fairness metric, but the version conditioned on statistical parity was the one which performed with optimal fairness. And so this is the one shown in this table here. The first column shows model accuracy and the remaining columns show model fairness in terms of the deviation from an ideally fair value. The ideally fair value here is zero. A deviation of more than 0.1 from the ideally fair value and 0.2 for disparate impact is considered to be an unacceptable level of discrimination. The mean fairness measure was calculated as well to assess the overall fairness of the model and the improvement in fairness from a plain model. 
From the first column, it is evident that improvements in fairness came at little to no cost to model accuracy. These results are further summarised in this bar graph. Here we can see that fairness was significantly improved when applying reweighing and reject option based classification, but not when applying adversarial debiasing. However, given the strangely low initial fairness value for the adversarial debiasing model, this increase could be due to the fact that the model didn't detect significant discrimination from the outset. Although reject options saw the greatest reduction in discrimination, the final reweighed model was the most fair of all the adjusted models. Regarding all three techniques then, choice of algorithmic processing technique heavily influenced the success of discrimination reduction. The pre and post processing techniques proved to be the most successful, as not only did they improve the fairness measures, they also brought each metric well beneath the threshold for permissible deviations in fairness. So to conclude, this research set out to investigate the potential of discrimination mitigation in clinical resource allocation machine learning decision models using a variety of algorithmic processing techniques across the different processing stages. The results were promising. Two of the three techniques showed a significant reduction in discrimination against the protected group. Mitigating discrimination at the pre-processing stage was found to be the most effective which is consistent with findings from other applications outside of the medical domain, which indicate that it is perhaps more beneficial to abate discrimination earliest in the process as possible, before it becomes heavily embedded in the model, rendering it difficult to both identify and to remove. Post-processing also showed encouraging results. Not only were the fairness measures improved, but they all remained well beneath the threshold for allowable deviations in fairness. Each method bore little to no cost to model accuracy. So given that these techniques have a high potential to perform successfully in this context, further steps should be taken to ensure the inclusion of these or similar methods in similar real-world algorithms. Suggestions for future research include repeating these experiments using a different data set, and widening to other clinical contexts, investigating other protected attributes and other processing techniques, focusing on a model which isn't distribution centric, which is the model that was used in this study. It was focused on distributive fairness. And so focusing on other forms of fairness, particularly in healthcare, could be beneficial. Highlighting individual fairness as well as group fairness. And finally, investigating policy and guidelines for fairness in clinical machine learning. Algorithmic techniques alone are not sufficient to mitigate discrimination, and this highlights some of the main limitations involved in this line of research. The lack of guidelines and consensus when it comes to measuring fairness in this con context are also limiting. So ultimately, future research necessitates an interdisciplinary approach because it cannot be ignored that fairness in clinical decision-making of all forms, including algorithmic decision-making, is paramount for providing equitable care. Thank you for listening to this presentation.